Hi there, it's Tyler from Nelly Security. Today we are going to look at some smart events on our Uniview motorized lens security cameras. Now as you can see here, I do have this 4K motorized turret feed pulled up. We took a look at this web interface in the previous video, but today we are going to go ahead and jump into setup and set up some smart events. Now the first setting I want to show you is in this local parameters menu here. As you can see, I have this untriggered target enabled under this intelligent mark section. Now I have this enabled so that we'll be able to see the live event overlays on the live screen, which we'll see here in a little bit. Now let's jump into this storage menu. And again, we took a look at this section in the last video, but I just wanted to remind you that we are using the onboard memory card for this section of the video. Later on, we will connect this to our NVR and use that hard drive, but for now, the only thing that we're using is this memory card. If you haven't already, go ahead and format this card and make sure that the check mark next to enable is checked. Now, one more setting I want us to check before we move forward is our snapshot settings. Now, we can find this under video and audio and snapshot. Just make sure that your snapshot is turned on. With that, let's go ahead and jump into our events tab. In the events menu, we will find the simplest triggers that we can set up for recording. This includes simple motion detection, a tampering alarm, and if you have one of these turrets, which do come with onboard microphones, we also have audio detection. Now we can set up standard pixel-based motion detection here, either as an area or as this typical grid that you're probably more used to. We can click and drag over the grid to either select or deselect parts of the image. Or under area, we can simply draw boxes to drag around the screen. Now, as you can see, I've set up these two areas. Area one focusing here only on our parking lot and area two is drawn around this road. Now, as I highlight each area, this little graph appears that shows us exactly how much movement is happening within that area. You can see that there's really nothing happening in area one, but if I click on area two, as the cars drive by, we do see these little lines start to populate across the graph. That line indicates how big the object is that's moving on the screen. So I can go ahead and change this object size from small to large. And as I do, you'll see that horizontal line move upwards across the screen. Now we can see that these lines signifying the cars moving on the screen are now grayed out. That's because these objects are now too small to trigger the motion detection alarm. As I bring this line back down, we can see that the lines are colored again, letting us know that they do surpass that threshold. This is a very convenient and visual way to edit your simple motion detection. Now we're gonna hop into trigger actions. You can choose either to send a recording to edge storage or an image to edge storage. We're gonna go ahead and do both just for demonstration purposes and click save. If you only want this event to take place during a certain time of day, you can click on plan and adjust the schedule accordingly. We'll also go ahead here and set up an audio detection event. We can either set this up to detect sudden rises in audio, sudden falls in audio, sudden change in general, or to detect audio above a certain threshold. We'll go ahead and set this to sudden rises. Now we can see this graph populating of our audio, which is pretty much maxing out right now. Our camera is pointed at a very busy street, but we shouldn't be seeing audio levels this high. So to fix this, let's head into video and audio and we will click on audio for input gain. Let's change this to zero just to see where our starting point is. So now if there is a sudden rise in audio, if these levels jump up to this 100 decibels or higher, this will trigger the audio detection alarm. What I want it to do in this case is go ahead and start a recording just so we can see what's going on out there. Now let's go ahead and jump into our intelligent menu and take a look at some of these advanced events. For right now, let's go ahead and set up a line crossing event. We will go ahead and enable cross line detection and add a new rule. Let's see, I could put this just right here in the middle, 
But again, we are on this busy street. Every single car that drives by is going to trigger that, like that car just did. We can see as these cars come on the screen, they get this green box around them with this green line that follows behind them. And as soon as the car crosses the line, it turns red. So let's go ahead and shorten this line just a bit and pull it down. So this way, I'll still be able to track movement across that sidewalk. And of course, anybody who drives or walks in our parking lot but I won't get a ton of false alarms from these cars driving by the road. Let's save that and head to the live view so we can see a bigger example of what's happening here. So here is my line crossing, and you can see it does extend it just a little bit past this sidewalk. Now we still get the green boxes around the cars as they appear on the screen because the camera recognizes that something is moving. But you can see as the car passes that blue line, it doesn't actually cross the line, so the box remains green. If the cars were actually triggering this line detection event, that box, again, would turn red. I'll go ahead and leave this line crossing enabled for a couple of days just to see what kind of footage we get. And now I will go ahead and hand it off to Tyler of the future so that we can check out this playback menu. Thanks, past Tyler. Now let's go ahead and check this out. Now I have had this event running for a couple of days now. I did, however, make one crucial mistake, and that is, I left basic motion detection on this whole time. It records every time it senses motion on the screen, and since there's pretty much always something moving on this busy street, it's been recording pretty much nonstop. And since this is only a 32 gigabyte micro SD card, it's pretty much been overriding itself nonstop. So the earliest footage that we have is about 4.30 this morning. And unfortunately, from the web interface, there is no way to filter out these events. There's no way for us to search for which events were triggered by basic motion detection and which events were triggered by the line crossing. I discovered this mistake around 12 o'clock this afternoon, and as you can see, from here on out, anytime you see a recording, this is all triggered by our line detection. And we can see these events were mostly triggered by vehicles driving in our parking lot, like this UPS truck, our mail carrier, my buddy Umer heading out to lunch, this is a very simple and stripped down playback interface. You don't have nearly as many options as you would on an NVR, but for quick and simple recording directly to a micro SD card, this is a great solution. We also have this photo menu here, which if you recall when we set up the basic motion detection event, we did set it up to both record and take a snapshot. So if we open up this hierarchy of photos and start clicking on these files, we can see all these snapshots taken from motion events. All right, past Tyler, back to you. All right, thanks future Tyler. I'm sure that was very informative. Let's go ahead and keep moving and head back to this intelligent event section. Now you can see when I have line crossing enabled, I can enable pretty much any of these other smart events. However, I cannot enable face detection or people counting. That's because with either face detection or people counting, you can't have any other events set up at a time. So I will go ahead and disable this line crossing for now, and that opens up these two events for us. One important thing to note about face detection, if I go ahead and click on this gear icon and jump into the settings, we do have a minimum pupillary distance of 80 pixels. And I can click draw. I can make that number bigger, so make the minimum pupillary distance 500 pixels, but I cannot make that smaller. So for this 4K turret, we are limited to an 80 pixel pupillary distance. Now what this pupillary distance is, it's going to be the distance between two eyeballs. So essentially, you can see here we have four corners. The top left corner and the top right corner would be two pupils. Let me go ahead and run outside for just a moment so you can have an idea of what kind of size we're working with here. So from where I'm standing, you can see that my face is quite a bit smaller than this 80 pixel box. So from here, this camera is not going to be able to detect my face. Now, as I start walking towards the camera about right here, this looks like it would be about the right size. However, if someone is walking towards our camera, by the time they get to this point, they're only going to be on the screen for, yeah, that much more time. Whew. But as you may have guessed, these Uniview motorized models are actually prime candidates for facial detection security cameras. That's because we do have the ability to optically zoom in, giving us more flexibility when it comes to that 80 pixel pupillary distance. So let's head back to the live view 
and zoom our camera all the way in. Our pupillary distance is still 80 pixels, but the image is more zoomed in, and we do have a little bit more to work with here. I'm gonna go ahead and run back outside, and we can't compare this with my eyeballs. All right, so now we are zoomed in. My face is clearly a lot bigger here, but my eyes still are not 80 pixels apart. And again, as I start walking toward the camera, right about here is what my pupillary distance needs to be. So yeah, this camera is not gonna work where we have it installed right now. So if you're planning to get a Uniview camera specifically for its face detection features, keep in mind that how well it's going to work for you is going to depend on how you install the camera. If you install the camera high up and far away from any face, it's probably not going to give you the results that you're looking for. Instead, you may consider installing your camera lower down, maybe even at eye level. Again, with these motorized lens cameras, you don't have to get it super close to your intended target because you can take advantage of that awesome zoom. So now, in order to set up and test out these facial detection features, we're gonna hop off of this 4K motorized turret and jump onto our four megapixel motorized bullet, which I currently have set up in our warehouse. As you can see, I have this 16 channel NVR set up behind me with two camera feeds pulled up. First, I have our 4K turret from the parking lot. I also have this four megapixel motorized bullet, which is set up in our warehouse. From this live view on the NVR, I can control the zoom through the PTZ controls. I can zoom all the way in, and I can zoom all the way out. There is a ton more to go over about these Uniview NVRs, but that's a video for another day. Let's go ahead and jump back into this face detection setup. To do this, I'm gonna head into the menu and VCA. I'm going to select D2, which is our motorized bullet, and make sure that save VCA images is enabled. Now I'm going to jump into face detection. We can either leave this set up for the whole screen or draw a specific area by clicking specify area. For trigger actions, we're going to enable recording on channel D2 and our face detection should be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the warehouse, walk past this camera a couple of times and see if we can trigger a couple of face detection events. If I pull this up on my web interface, you'll be able to see a green square appear on the live view whenever a face is first recognized by the system. Now we're going to head to the menu and to VCA search. Here we're gonna be able to see what kind of snapshots we've been taking of all of these different faces. We'll click face. We will select our camera, D2. We can set a start time and an end time if we need to and click search. Here it's going to pull up all the snapshots of the faces that we've captured using face detection. If we click on one of these, we can watch the video clip here. Not only does this intelligent event search for faces, but it also counts the faces that it sees. So if we head over here into the counting menu, we can select our camera and click count. As you can see, this is set to today's date, so that means today, at between two and three o'clock, we counted 21 people with our security camera. Keep in mind that we do not have people counting turned on, so this statistic came directly from the face detection event. If we go into our playback menu, we can also search for these events using the video retrieval menu. We will set a type, VCA, and a subtype, face detection. Select our camera, and click search. And now we have this list of video files that we've captured using face detection. We can go ahead and click this play button, but before we do, we can change the amount of seconds that we want to see before and after the event happened. I'll change this to just five seconds before and click play. And there is the capture event. We can see as we play these, this head count moves up. Every time it captures a face, a new number is added to the head count number.
Well, that's it for this video and for this series focusing on the Uniview motorized lens security cameras. Keep an eye out for our next video, which will be the full review from start to finish. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss another video. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you next time.